Welcome back to another building series video and we are back with your suggestions. So the, one of the other suggestions was to somehow display the collision boxes, uh, our snapping points essentially whenever we are trying to build and that's what we are going to do today. Now unfortunately I don't know how to make like a nice shiny outline material for this object because it is a fully transparent object uh, so my stencil method that I'm that I was using in the inventory series does not really work for this uh, but there is a small workaround which is let's have a look at it actually let's bring in our for example let's bring in our build foundation in the world as you can see here are the uh, our collision boxes but whenever we press play they are invisible we can actually make those visible so what I'm going to do is go ahead, open those up. We have our boxes. I'm going to select all of them and we are going to, you might have to click this show advanced. We can change the shape color of it. So in the viewport, let's go ahead and let's change that to, let's change this to something like yellow perhaps. Uh, there we go. Something like this. Okay. And now, all of them will be yellow. Another option is to make them thinner so we can change the align thickness. Let's change this to something like three perhaps so that they are more noticeable. So that's how this is going to look. Now, obviously we don't want to show all of them, but just to, for now, just to display, the, display them, I'm going to select all of them, scroll down, and I'm going to uncheck the hidden in the game. So whenever that is false, we press play, we can see all of these outlines. Now, I might have not picked the correct color. Some other color might be a little bit better. But for the sake of the tutorial, obviously, you can change it to whatever uh, color you want. I'm not going to bother with that. So let's make sure that we check this back to true so that they are hidden in the game. We have the colors changed. All good with that. Uh, you got to make sure that you open up all of your other buildables and do exactly the same thing. So just to keep it consistent. I'm going to right click and copy the color and I'm going to go ahead and provide this for all of our collision boxes. We're going to paste that and I believe it was three pixels. Yeah, three pixels or three units, whatever those are, should be good for the door. We have no collision. We have one for our build wall. So we're going to apply this color to the wall as well. And same goes for the sizes. Okay, so we are good with this. Now we need to somehow figure out uh, how can we transfer this information over? How can we make sure that we display only the correct boxes and all that stuff? Now let's have a look in our build component to figure out where would be the best location for us to display these boxes. How do we do that? First and foremost, we need to somehow interact with our object. How can we know which object that we are looking at is by using our build cycle because this thing right here constantly does a line trace and it constantly collides with something. It constantly, constantly detects something. And whenever we collide with a build, we also try to detect its build boxes. So we could actually use this interface call right here to help us draw these boxes. Now we don't need to do this on the server side, only the specific client, the specific player actually needs to know these outlines. Nobody else really cares about that. So we're not going to really bother replicating this. That's uh, pretty useless. And also it might be a little bit bandwidth heavy since we are having this line trace be ran very, very often. And so therefore, if we replicate this, we're going to be sending a lot the data to the server which is it's not really needed and and it's not a good idea either so the first thing that we need is we actually would need to transfer also the information about which trace channel we are using so that we know which exact boxes we need to display we don't want to display all the boxes if we are building foundation all we need is the foundation boxes so we need to somehow transfer this trace channel along the way so i'm just going to copy these nodes right here and I'm going to paste them over here so that it is easier for me to access. Obviously, I could have grabbed it from here as well. Uh, shouldn't be too big of an issue. So first, we need to pass this along to the detect build boxes. So we're going to add a input and we're going to call this trace channel. And we're going to use our a trace type query. There we go. And now this whole thing got way bigger. So we're going to go ahead and move this out and perhaps move this a little down. Okay. 
let's go ahead and let's plug in our trace channel to over here and that way we can actually move this back and it's gonna look nice okay we have passed along the trace channel let's now go ahead let's open up our detect build boxes and we actually need to pass that along into our interface now we can't really drag it in it's not going to work that way but we can double click this interface it instantly opens the function for us let's select the function itself and let's add this an input and call this trace channel and we have our e trace type query compile and save this and now back in our build component, we are able to provide this input. Nice. So that is getting passed along nicely. Now let's go ahead and let's start uh, doing the logic that is necessary inside of our actual buildables because other than that, we are pretty much already done. And this one actually is going to be very simple because the only one that needs some changes is our build master. None of the other buildables need that because the build window doesn't have any collision boxes. And this is the only buildable that does not use our build master in this case. So build master it is. Let's see. So the first thing is let's go to our return boxes. And here is our function, which basically grabs all the components from that class and returns them. Now, over here, we're going to need to do a couple of adjustments. The first thing is we really have no real way how to know that we no longer look at this. We could set up some kind of a code, uh, but then we'd need to store the information about the previous actors that we have looked at. So we should make an array of those and then clear the array. And that's quite a lot of work. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new variable and I'm going to call this time. And this is going to be a float value for me. It's not going to be replicated because we don't want to replicate this information. This needs to be local on the client, uh, uh, only on the client. And we're going to go ahead and set this. And basically, this is going to represent how long after we have looked at this actor, uh, the, the, line, the outline should be displayed. And I'm going to say for me, it's going to be like two seconds. Maybe for you, it might be longer, shorter. It's totally up to you. Okay, so we're going to run that thing. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually display the correct lines. Uh, we're going to need to run a timer, which is going to cancel these lines. But first, let's go ahead and let's try to display them. And to do so, we're going to go ahead and grab our collision boxes. These guys right here, all of our boxes that we have returned. And we're going to do a loop for each. So we're going to go through all of these boxes that we have inside of this actor. And actually, this return node afterwards can be ran from the completion of the loop so whenever we are done with the loop we can just return all of those boxes to our uh, build cycle for our build component now inside of our loop body what we want to do is first we want to grab from the from the box itself so this is going to be one of the boxes and we're going to check uh, collision response to channel we need to get the collision response to a specific channel now for this channel how do we detect one which one we need to use is going to be a bit tricky because there's going to be a lot of things going on so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to do a select from the trace channel that we have received so i'm going to do a select and now we have multiple different options over here that will be available to us we're just going to return our return value into this channel. And now we can go ahead and provide all kinds of values over here. Now, the first two don't really matter because we are not really going to use those, but we are going to use all the rest of them. So we got to go ahead and provide that the foundation trace uses the foundation trace, floor trace, wall trace, window trace, and a door trace. Now, this way, based on this one, it's going to check if it's the same. And actually, yeah, we can't really do that one. For some reason, we can't really do that one, even though that is collision channel enum. Because this one provides all the collision channels that we have in general. So we can't really do it like this, because this one is just a trace channel. It's not the collision channels. But this way, it is going to return us the correct information, and it is going to do the trick for us so now what we want to do is check what is the response to this channel so we want to do an equals from the return value and we want to check if the uh, return value is blocked so whether this specific trace channel is getting blocked by this specific uh, box so we're going to do an if like so 
and then if that is true then this box right here needs to has have his set hidden in game be set to false because now we need to display it because we are this trace channel is going to be blocking this so that means that it is our foundation or whatever other uh, build so with this code being implied we can actually go ahead and test this out and we have our foundation over here so if i will hit b nothing's really going to happen but if i will look at it you will see the the boxes come up now, they're not going to disappear right now because we don't have any code that would make them disappear. But if we change this to like floor, you can see it shows up the floor like it's supposed to because there is. And if we scroll even more, we got the wall. And we should also get the door. Oh, no, the door one is in the wall itself. So these are the collision boxes that we are going to receive and they are getting displayed nicely. Now we got to make sure that they also get destroyed as well so that they don't get displayed all the time. Now we're going to do that inside of our event graph. We're going to set up a couple of things. The first one is let's create ourselves the first custom event. We're going to need two of these and let's call this start outline timer like so. And from here, we're going to go ahead and set timer by event or function. I'm going to run mine by an event and the time for this is going to be 0.1 seconds and this is going to be a looping event. Now you could run this uh, a little less than 0.1 seconds, but I think 0.1 is going to be the best one for me in this case. And then we're going to do another custom event, which is going to be the actual outline timer itself. And let's make sure we connect this red thingy to over here so that we know that, uh, so that the system knows that this is the event that needs to get ran every 0.1 seconds. And over here, what we are going to do is actually reduce our time. So we're going to grab our time and we're going to set it. Now to set it first, we need to get the current value. We don't want to set it here. We want to get it over here. And then from here, we want to do minus float minus float. And we want to reduce the time that we provided over here. So it's going to be 0.1 seconds. Now, so that it doesn't go below zero and all that stuff. I'm just going to simply clamp that. We're going to clamp the float, plug it in. And the minimum is going to be zero. And the maximum in my case is going to be two seconds because that's what I provided over here. So I'm going to set it to two. Now, the next thing is to check what value it is now after it has been reduced every 0.1 seconds. So we want to check if this float is equal to zero. So whether the time has ran out. So we're going to do an if to see if that is true. And if that is true, well, then the next of the code is actually pretty simple. First, we need to go ahead and get all of our collision boxes. So we want to get components by class, get components by class. Those are our box components. We want to do a loop for each on the true route. And then from here, from the box itself, we want to again set hidden in game. And this, this time we want to make sure that this is set to true because we need to hide it because our timer has ran out. We have no longer, no, no more time. So we got to make sure that we now hide these boxes so they are no longer visible. And then from the completion, what we want to do is actually pause the timer. We don't need that timer anymore. We can go ahead and pause it. So from the return value of the timer, I'm going to pause. Pause timer by handle. And the execution pin is not going to come from here. So I'm going to unconnect this. Otherwise, it's going to start it and pause it immediately. Instead, the execution will come from the end of the loop, like so. So now in this situation right here, it's going to start it for us and then it's going to do its thing. And once it runs out of time, it's going to go ahead and pause that specific timer. So now let's give it a try. Let's see how this all works. So as you can see, we have these boxes. We have this box. So those should disappear in a bit. Um, that's interesting. They don't seem to. Oh, silly me, silly me. Again, forget the most important part, which happens a lot to everybody. We actually need to run the timer. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So inside of our return boxes where we began this whole journey, we need to bring this back. And before we run the loop, we need to run our start outline timer. <laughs> there we go. And once we have done that now, these ones should disappear. So we give this a couple of seconds and 
Okay, it doesn't want to hide. Yeah, because we reset the timer back. Hmm. So this is something that I didn't think of that obviously, well, it's not going to uh, remove those because the timer is still valid. We still have time, so it's not going to remove those uh, unhidden boxes. So instead, what we need to do, instead of having a condition to whether it blocks or not, I'm actually going to do a switch based on this result. So we're going to do a switch over here like so. So now it's going to return as the th three responses, block, ignore, and overlap. Now the block needs to be hidden. Well, well actually it needs to be shown. So we're going to run the false on new hidden. And we're going to have another one, which is actually going to hide these boxes. And that's going to come from our ignore and overlap channels. So if the, if the box uh, collision is getting ignored or overlapped, we're going to hide it. If it's getting blocked, we're going to show it. Make sure to connect the target as well. And now we should be good. So now this one is that one. And then we have that one. And you can see it instantly changes to the correct one that we actually need. So there we go. That's going to be it for today's episode. As you can see, we have these boxes now available. We can see where we need to put the next build and it's going to come in quite handy, perhaps in a long run um, so for maybe your players to be a little bit more familiar with how this building actually works so that it is easier for them as well. If you have any more suggestions, leave them down in the comment section or contact me on Discord and I see you in the next one.